In this tutorial, we are going to create a baseball t-shirt design and then mock it up on a t-shirt. To make this design, we will trace a clip art, create customized text with outlines, and add some tire stripes to the text using a power clip. When complete, we will export the file to a PDF to be ready to send to a screen printer or another vendor. Let's get started by creating our new document. So if we come up to File and New, we're going to create a letter size document in landscape. So let's set letter and click our landscape orientation and click OK. A commonly used color palette for screen printers is the Pantone Spot Color Palette. Let's open that so we have it handy while we're designing. So let's go to Windows, Dockers, and if we scroll way down, it's off my screen, but look for the word palettes and click on that. What that's going to do is open the palette manager. So now inside here, let's go to the Spot Color Palettes, open that, click on Pantone, Open that, open Pantone Plus, and select the solid coated version 3. I like my palettes at the bottom of the screen, so if you come up here and click on these gray dots and drag, and watch your gray bar, and when it starts to turn horizontal and let go, it will add it to you the bottom of your CorelDRAW window. Another palette I also like to have open is the document palette. There's two places to open that. You can click it in here as well. And the second place is if you go to Window, and color palettes, you can turn it on right here. And now I can close this docker because I don't need it anymore. Let's start by importing the color t-shirt our design will go on. Let's go to File and Import, browse to our file, select it, and choose Import. We can draw a rectangle on the page to import our shirt. Before we get too far, we should save our document so we can use the Save icon or go to File and Save. And I'm going to my desktop and clicking on my baseball design folder and I'm going to call it baseball t-shirt. And choose save. Now let's create a background color on our page of that shirt color. This will help us see how the ink colors we choose will look against that color. We're going to move the shirt off the page to assist in that. So now we're going to double click on our shadow to get to the page options. Come over here to Background, choose Solid, and go into the Color drop-down. And we're going to click the eyedropper, and we're going to come over here to the shirt color, and click OK. Now we're ready to bring in our clip art. So let's go to File, and Import, Browse to our clip art, select it, click Import, and draw a rectangle on the page. While our clip art is selected, if you look at the bottom of the status bar, it shows that this is an RGB bitmap that is 316 dpi. And this is a bitmap, so it will have to be traced with PowerTrace. Uh, if you want to learn more about vector art versus raster art, we have a tutorial in the CorelDRAW Discovery Center. Select the clip art if not already selected. Come up to Trace Bitmap, choose Outline Trace, and choose Clip Art to get to PowerTrace. It's going to ask us if we want to reduce the bitmap DPI to get better performance, and we do, so let's reduce the bitmap. Okay, let's see what we got inside PowerTrace. The top image inside PowerTrace is the bitmap, the original, and this is our result as we're adjusting the settings. So let's see what we got. We want to delete the background, so we'll leave that on. We're going to merge the adjacent colors, and we're going to remove the overlap. Let's also group by color, because that way, if we want to change the reds all at one time, it's easy, and they're going to be pre-grouped for me. If I want to delete the original, I could do that. Now let's jump over to the Colors tab and see what we have. We have three reds and two grayish whites. Uh, a tip here is if you know you're going to switch to spot colors, you can come in the drop down and preset that so that all the colors change right away. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to show you how to do it outside of prior trace when we're done. So let's merge these reds so we get down to just a red and white baseball. So let's select this and then hold shift and select this one and this one and choose merge. And let's do the same thing for these two colors. Let's select this. Select this with Shift and hit Merge. So now we're down to a two-color result, and we can easily change those colors outside the window. So let's click OK. OK, here's our Power Trace result. Let's move this clip art over and move this guy over, and we can kind of compare. If we go to View and Wireframe, we'll see the difference. Here was our original bitmap, and here's our new trace of shapes. To go out of Wireframe, go up to View and Enhanced. And we can delete this guy because we don't need him anymore. And now we can change our colors. So if we ungroup our clip art, we'll see that we have two groups. Undo that and bring them back. 
So now we're gonna, we have our gray selected and we come down here and click white. And if we hit tab, it'll jump to our other group and we can click red on our palette. And let's not forget to regroup our clip art so that when we're designing, we can move it around and scale it easily. So let's select it all and then come up here and choose the group button on the property bar and we're all grouped. Okay, let's get ready to add some text, but first let's save again as we're going. So we keep our progress saved and let's come over here to the text tool and then click on our page and type the word tigers in all uppercase and then come back to our pick tool, grab the bottom right hand corner and drag larger. Then come up to the font menu and just pick a heavy font. I'm gonna pick one up here that's nice and heavy for me and we can enlarge it, we can stretch it taller and adjust it to where we think we want and then we can move our clip art out of the way and smaller so we can adjust our text. And I'm gonna save again. And now we're going to add an envelope. So let's select our text and then go to effects and open the envelope docker and we'll open up on the side here. And the option we're gonna want is this one right here and then we're gonna choose add new and it creates the boundary around it and now we can manipulate that. So we're gonna make it like an arch on the bottom. So we'll pull that middle handle up and then we can come back to our pick tool and we can make it taller and adjust it however we need. If we don't like our arch, we can tweak it back down a little bit until you get it how you like it. Okay, we're done with the envelope. So we can close the envelope docker over here and let's select on our text and set the color now. So let's scroll down our palette here and find orange for tires. And there's our orange. And let's also add a contour. So if we go to effects and open the contour docker, and let's set that thickness to about 0.13 and we'll come in here and we'll set a dark color and close that and scroll down to get to the apply. And there it is. If we want a little thicker, we can pop it up a couple notches and click apply. And when I'm done with my contours, I usually break apart the contours if I know I'm done editing. And there's our color on the top text. Okay, we're done with the contour docker, so we can close that. And let's add our word baseball to the design. So we're gonna type baseball in all uppercase and then enlarge it and put it in approximate location and then come up to our font menu and scroll up to find the font, set that. And now it's in CMYK, so let's set the, that to spot color as well. So let's scroll down our palette here and find the Pantone black. And if you mouse over it, it tells you where it is. There it is. And I realized we didn't set our black on our design up here. So let's set the black up there so they match and are consistent. Now we can add our tiger stripes to the word tiger. So let's select the freehand drawing tool and let's draw a quick stripe. And just do it by freehand. You just gotta make sure it's closed, which is this icon here, so it's closed. And then we can fill it with black since our black jumped in our palette. It's right down here now is the colors we're using. And I'm gonna remove the outline that's on the shape right now. It says it has a, a CMYK outline. If we uh, right click on this, it will remove the outline. And then I can come to my shape tool and adjust the nodes and make, make it longer if I want to tweak the, sh the stripe the way to look as however I want. To be as creative, you can make multiples, you can just make one. And so now we're ready to make duplicates of this to fill the whole word. So a quick shortcut to adding duplicates is your plus key on your keyboard. And I use my one on my numpad. So if I hit, hit that once, it doesn't look like anything happened, but there's a duplicate created. So now I can drag it around, I can scale it. So now if I want more, I drag another one do another one, hit, keep hitting plus, and you can drag them where you want. You can rotate them, you can squish them and move them around. And we can do plus again, put one over here and do plus again. Oops, I didn't duplicate that one before I dragged it. There's one there, scale it down. And then we can even come back and edit the nodes if we want and make it look a little different. And then duplicate that one and bring that one over here. Bring this one over here, one over here and keep doing that till we fill our complete word. Put them and adjust them as you need them, as you go. And we'll squish that one up, make it look a little different, move it over here, and then we'll squish it this way, and tilt it a little, and just and you can customize it to your heart's content. Oops, deselected it, I wanna move up here, and there we go. 
and do one more over here. Now I'm hitting plus every time I want to duplicate that stripe. And we'll add one more over here so it's on this side. We'll shrink it way down, get a little stripes over here. And, but now they're sticking out the edges, so we want to power clip those inside the shape. Now let's lasso all these stripes so we can select them all at once, come up here and group them into a group. And now if we right click on one of the stripes and we choose power clip inside and point to the orange text, it will put them inside that orange text. All right, we're in the home stretch of putting our design together. Uh, right now I'm going to lasso this upper text because there's two items, the orange text and the black contour. So I'm going to group that by hitting Control G on my keyboard. And then I can start to move my design around to see how I like it. Now if I want them centered exactly, I can lasso them all and I can hit C on my keyboard. Or you can go to the object menu and the align options are under align and distribute. C and E is, C is the keyboard shortcut I'm using. I use the C E centering shortcuts all the time. So now let's see, are we doing pretty good? We're pretty good. Um, now I've realized I forgot my white outline. I'm going to add an outline to this text. So I'm going to right click on the white on the color palette, then come over here and double click to set my settings. And I'm going to set that at about an eight point and set behind fill and scale with image. And that looks pretty good. Let me double check my centering again and lasso them, center them. There we go. And then I'm going to nudge my baseball up a little bit. And we're just about done, so I'm going to group, lasso everything, and group my whole design. Okay, let's put our finishing touches on this design. Uh, we want to decide what our final size is going to be, and a common size for youth t-shirts is 10 inches wide. So if you look up in our toolbar right now, we're 9.3 inches, so I can type 10 inches here as long as our bar is locked right here. The size proportions are locked, and we hit tab, it'll make it 10 inches proportionally and there's our design. Now we're ready to put it on the shirt. So let's do a control C or copy and you can do go edit copy as well. And let's come down here and let's add another page in our document and let's paste our design. And now we can go back to here and also copy our shirt and come back to page two and paste our design. And now we can bring it on the page and let's bring our design to the front by going order and to the front of the page. And we can grab, grab our corner down here and scale it and make it look proportional to the actual size we're printing. So make sure it doesn't look 14 inches wide when you're actually only printing, want it printed 10 inches wide. And there's our design, all mocked up on a shirt. Let's make sure we save again so that we get all our changes saved. And now if you're ready to send it to a vendor, you can come down here to file and publish to PDF and let's set some settings. Make sure you browse to where you want to save it to. I want to put it in my baseball design folder and I'm going to come down here and choose pre-press because this is for high-end printing with high quality graphics. And let's choose settings. And we can choose whether we're exporting the whole document or a current page. Right now it's set to current page, but let's switch it to current document. If you need to do specific pages, you can tell it specific pages as well. And I also come up here to objects and I tell it to export all text as curves because my vendor may not have the font that I use. So this way all your whole document in the PDF will be converted to curves, but your original file will still be text, which will be editable in case you want to change tigers to lady tigers. So let's click OK. And if we hit save, our PDF is all saved with our two page document ready to be emailed to your vendor. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to a tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial and the exercise file to follow along. You will also find other helpful tutorials on CorelDRAW.